So today we're going to be looking at Python, which is an open source programming language made both to look good and be easy to read. And Python is a great programming language for beginners. It's a high level language, which means that a programmer can focus on what to do instead of how to do it. Python is what's known as an interpreted language, and interpreted languages do not need to be compiled to run. A program called an interpreter will run Python code on any kind of computer it can run on itself. And this means that if a programmer needs to change the code, they can quickly see the results. Python is a very popular programming language at the moment, and there's many software applications out there that you may or may not use um, that, that rely on Python. For example, YouTube is, is, is a website that the foundation for Python helped integrate streaming videos into their pages as well as the ability to like videos and embed certain information. And uh, another application is Dropbox and uh, Dropbox is used by a variety of individuals, businesses, companies, organizations and the, the Dropbox program lets you save files to a cloud-based service that you can access from anywhere in the world. And with Python at the root of Dropbox, there's no longer a need for USB sticks or blank CDs, since you can now save and share everything with your cloud-based account. And another one is Reddit, which is one of the biggest open communities on the web. And the site itself relies on Python to help them store usernames, categorize subreddits, and upload links to GIFs or GIFs, and um, you know many more. Uh, functions. And the program we're going to be using today is called IDLE, which stands for Integrated Development and Learning Environment. And it's an integrated development environment for Python. And it's been bundled with the default implementation of the language since 1.5.2. So you can see here we already have IDLE open. It's the Python 2.7.6 shell. And you can type simple commands in here and get responses. I'm just going to type a simple addition problem, 5 plus 5, and push enter. And you can see it gives you the response of 10. And, but what we're going to actually write our script in for this Pig Latin activity is in, in Notepad. And if you don't have any idea of how coding works, uh, you might want to check out another video I have on this channel called What is Coding, where I give an overview of how computer programming works. And so yes, yeah, so we're going to write our program in Notepad. So what we're essentially going to be making is a Pig Latin translator. So for those of you that don't know, Pig Latin is a juvenile code language, quote unquote, that is created by a rearrangement of sounds in a word such that the first sound is moved to the end and A is added. And so, for example, if you said something such as, I am able to speak Pig Latin, if you translated that to Pig Latin, it'd be, I a, a me, able a, ute, ixpe, igpe, atenle. Alright, so it's just a simple language, but I, I feel like this program will show you kind of how Python works and, and coding in general, if this is one of your first programs. The program that we're going to write is going to consist of five lines and I'm going to walk through each one. So with your notepad application open, on the first line you're just going to type type word. This is going to be our first variable equals raw underscore input open parentheses quote word to translate into pig latin question mark quote oh actually question mark space quote close parentheses and with this first line when the user opens the program what they're going to present be presented with is this basically what's what's in the quotes here word to translate into pig latin so right off the bat they're going to be asked what word do you want to be translated into pig latin and whatever they type is going to be the raw input here which is going to be our type word uh, variable all right, so let's go ahead and start a new line, and we're going to type first letter equals type word bracket zero bracket, and 
with this we're making another variable the first letter variable and you know you could call it whatever you want you just have to be consistent we're calling it first letter because basically what we're gonna do is tell the computer that what we want the first letter to be is what the computer understands as type word zero and zero represents the first item in in the word in the raw input that the user types in so the, the first letter of the raw input is going to be our first letter variable and so basically we're telling the computer what the first letter of the word they want translated is I'm gonna start a new line and make a new variable the rest of word variable which equals type word bracket one colon bracket and with this variable it's telling the computer that every letter after the first letter this um, type word one colon it's basically every letter onward from um, the second letter um, is going to be the rest of word and you might notice that it says zero and one you might think it'd be one and two but with Python and many other programming languages zero is the first number they, they usually start uh, numbering with zero one two three instead of one two three four so the first letter is going to be letter zero and the second letter is letter one and the colon basically means one onwards so now the computer is going to know the rest of the word after the first letter what the first letter is and finally we're going to put it all together into the pig latin word which is going to be our next variable final variable pig latin word equals rest of word plus plus first letter plus quote a so basically we're telling the computer that the pig latin word the translated word that we want is going to consist of the rest of the word every letter after the first letter and we're going to add after that the first letter of the word which the computer knows is the first letter of the typed in input and then after that we're going to add the a okay you're going to have it a, 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 a basically making it a a pig latin uh, vocabulary word and uh, finally we want to show the user what the computer did so we're going to write um, as the final piece of uh, final line of code here print pig latin word all right and that's the program and so in order to run this program we're going to want to save it as a python program so you can do this from notepad you're just going to go file save as and then um, type the name of our program i'm going to call it pig latin translator dot py so designating it as a python um, file type and you can do that by just typing the dot py on any text file and i'm just going to save it in this python folder hit save and let's go ahead and open up that folder and you can see here we have our pig latin translator it has the little python icon here because we saved it as a dot py file and what I'm going to do is right click on it and you can see the option here is to edit with idle and that's because of I have uh, idle installed on this computer so you should have that option when you right click on a Python file and I'm going to go ahead and click on it and you can see the program is here open in uh, the idle program and it looks nice it's got colors on it and this looks good what I'm going to do is run the program so I'm going to click run and click run module and this should run the program so you can see that it says word to translate into pig latin and so i'm going to type in the word that i want translated into big latin pig latin so i'll just type word word i want to translate word into pig latin so it should be in theory erdway and when i hit enter it should do everything behind the scenes and create erdway you can see that it did erdway and you know all that happened in a fraction of a second so all these variables and calculating 
not much to calculate, but all that calculating happened in a fraction of a second and gave us our Pig Latin word. So I imagine many of you are more interested in making actual software applications that you could potentially sell or put out there on the market and or just create an open source application uh, for use if you think you have a good idea. And so you're not necessarily interested in making some sort of text-based Pig Latin translator. And um, have no fear that Python is a great programming languages, program language rather, uh, for uh, creating an application based on your idea. And, but you may require some other uh, open source applications or even paid for applications, but I'm going to give you some open source applications such as Kivi or Kivi which will allow you to make a nice what they call a graphical user interface or GUI for your program. It's an open source Python library for rapid development of applications that make use of innovative user interfaces such as multi-touch apps. And if you wanted to take your program and make it into an executable file so that you don't have to run it through the idle program and you can just click on an icon, you can use an application such as PyInstaller, which is a program that freezes or packages Python programs into standalone executables under Windows, Linux, Mac OS X, and many other operating systems. So yeah, I, I hope you learned a lot during this tutorial, and I'll be making more in the future, but I just wanted to get you guys started coding for anyone that's interested in uh, the Python programming language.